Welcome to video one for The Merchant of Venice. You should hopefully have your copy of the play in front of you, so if you could now turn to the first page of Act One. Now, before we get started with annotating Act One, we're actually going to have a look at just the plot for Scene One, and we're going to use our post-it stuck over the top of Shylock's face, and we're going to write down the plot. So what I'd like everybody to do at this point is to write down that Antonio is a sad character. And many people in scene one try to cheer him up. Now Bassanio, Antonio's friend, comes to him and tells him about the beautiful Portia and says that he needs money in order to woo her and Antonio says he will help. So we're going to write this down just as a plot summary on the rest of the post-it. And that should be your Act 1, Scene 1 summary complete. Now we're going to try and write one of these for each one of the scenes and make sure they're stuck into our copy of the play so that when you come back to revise, it's nice and straightforward. Now moving into our, na our analysis of Act 1, Scene 1, I've changed pen colour. You may want to have one that's not black so that you can see your annotations as you write against the text. Now Antonio starts by saying, in sooth, I know not why I am so sad. What we're going to put down here is that he has a great sadness for at the beginning of the play, and this is going to mirror, it's going to match up with the character of Portia. And when we first see her, she is also going to say that she's quite sad. So we'll write down here, mirrors Portia. However, it contrasts Shylock. When Shylock is sad, he's very clear that his sadness is because of the loss of his money. Again, this is something from later on in the play, but it makes sense to have the annotation written down here. So we'll put contrasts, Shylock, and we'll use the quotation 3,000 ducats. Now Antonio talks about the fact that it um, it wearies him to be sad, so it, he's aware that his sadness is um, it's taking over him at the beginning of the play. Um, remember this is a comedy, so we know that by the end of the play it's going to end happily for all of our Christian characters, so we don't need to worry about him. He says in line five, um, I am to learn. So it says, what stuff is made of, whereof it is born, I am to learn. So we could underline that and we could put down that it contrasts with that happy ending. Now, Salarino is quite worried about Antonio um, and he's worried about the reason that Antonio is sad. So he says, your mind is tossing on the ocean. Now, he uses a metaphor here to suggest that Antonio's mind um, is all over the place, much like Antonio's ships, because remember, Antonio is a merchant, and at the moment, he has sent out all of his money to go buy different things from around the world and to bring them back on the ships so that he can sell them. So at the moment, all of his money is tied up in these ships and in these goods. So Salarino suggests that his mind is all over the place, 
because his money is all over the place. So we can put down next to this line that it's a metaphor. And it shows a lack of control. It also reminds us, as we've said, of where his money is and where his mind is as a result. Now, Solanio is also quite concerned about Antonio's sadness. Now, the pair of them, we're going to call them S and S. S and S are, they're concerned about him, but not overly concerned because they're making quite a lot of um, jokey references about his sadness as well. And they're both saying that, yes, their minds would also be full up with worry if all of their money was elsewhere. So they talk about um, their hopes being abroad. So this idea that their hopes are elsewhere, they're out of the country along with the money that's on these ships. Uh, they talk about things like the wind, natural imagery to show that actually your concerns can change um, just like the wind can change at any point. Salarino actually makes um, a bit of a joke here about the idea that even if he were blowing on his soup to cool it down, it would remind him of the wind out at sea and he'd get stressed out even through that image. We do, however, at this point, and we're going to write it down at the bottom, we get um, a bit of foreshadowing about the potential destruction of Antonio's ships. So we'll write at the bottom, foreshadowing, the destruction of his ships. Now we've turned over the page, we're on page two, and we can see that Salarino is talking about um, his own ships. So he's making reference to a ship called the Andrew. He's saying it's full of wealth. Um, and he's talking about his own fear here, um, of something happening to the ships whilst they're out at sea. And he actually compares the ship to a woman. He talks about um, her high top lower than her ribs to kiss her burial. And he's talking about the loss of a ship as though it's equivalent to the loss of a person. It shows you the value that these ships hold to the merchants. I think all we're going to write down here is how important money and wealth is to the merchants. Antonio, however, um, says that actually his ventures are not in one bottom trusted. So not all of his money is on the same ship. And not all of his ships are going to the same place, when he says nor to one place. Nor is my whole estate upon the fortune of this present year. So he hasn't actually sent out all of his money. So he says, to be honest, my merchandise makes me not sad. So he makes it really clear at this point that it's not money and it's not his ships that are making him sad because he hasn't put all of his money in one venture. So we'll write down at the sad, ships not making Antonio sad. Now if it's not the ships that are making him sad, Solanio has another idea. He says, why then you are in love! And it's the first mention we have of love in the place. So we'll just underline it. And Antonio argues against this when he says, fie, fie. He's trying to suggest that that's really silly. It's definitely not about love. And in fact, at the end of the play, Antonio is one of the characters who isn't coupled up. So love really isn't that important to Antonio, or at least the love of a woman is not that important to Antonio. And Solanio is really confused. Not in love neither? Then let us say you are sad because you are not merry. So he says, actually, maybe you just have a sadness about you. And that perhaps some people just are sad at different points. And this links to when Antonio is going to say that everybody plays a part in life. And he compares himself to an actor and he says that his part is just a sad one. So we don't know the cause of his sadness. 
we just know that he is indeed sad. So we can write down at the side here that the cause of his sadness remains a mystery. Now at this point, one of our major characters enters. So we have Bassanio entering. And Bassanio is kinsman to Antonio. So he is the godson to Antonio. He is a really significant character in this place. We might want to highlight or circle his name. And we need to put down that he and Antonio are family. They get called kinsmen in the play. It means family. Okay, so we've turned over the page and we're on page four. We're looking now at line 77 and this is the reference that we made a moment ago where Antonio says, I hold the world, I hold the world, but as the world, Graziano, a stage where every man must play a part and mine a sad one. So he really does make reference to the fact that he is just a sad character. There's a sadness about him. We don't know what it is. Now, interestingly, we meet a new character. This is Graziano, and Graziano says, let me play the fool. And we're going to circle the word fool because Graziano really is an interesting character because he's quite humorous and he is going to play a foolish character throughout. He's somebody that we can laugh at. He adds a comic element to the play. So we've circled the word fool and we'll write down that um, the audience are encouraged to laugh along with him. We don't laugh at him, we laugh with him. We're in on the joke. So we've said he's a fool and we're going to move over to page five here where Bassanio in line 114 um, makes reference to the fact that he is a fool by saying Graziano speaks an infinite deal of nothing more than any man in all of Venice. So although they're friends, he agrees, Graziano, bit of a fool. So we'll just write fool down here. Now we get into, at this point, the major part of Act 1, Scene 1, which is to establish the romantic relationship between Bassanio and Portia and to ask for Antonio's help in order to woo her. So, Antonio says, Well, tell me now, what lady is the same to whom you swore a secret pilgrimage that you today promised to tell me of? Now, it's important here that he calls it a secret pilgrimage. A pilgrimage is something we would associate with um, a religion. It's a religious trip. So the suggestion here is that Bassanio's love for Portia is pure um, and it's a very important love. So we'll put religious language and love is pure and important. Now, Bassanio is going to admit quite a major flaw about himself. "'Tis not unknown to you, Antonio, how much I have disabled mine estate." So we'll underline disabled mine estate and we'll put down at the side that he has run out of money. Bassanio was born into a wealthy family and he hasn't had to work very hard for his money. And instead, he has lived um, a very luxurious lifestyle and he hasn't always thought about how he's spending that money and he hasn't always cared about the fact that it might run out one day. He takes time to talk about his great debts. And he says to Antonio, to you, Antonio, I owe the most in money and in love. Now we're going to see a theme here with Bassanio, that when he references money and love, he quite frequently puts money first. So we'll highlight that quotation and we'll show that um, he owes Antonio everything. And we'll write money before love. 
but he's got a plan. So Bassanio is having this conversation with Antonio and he says um, that he wants to unburden all my plots and purposes, how to get clear of all the debts I owe. So he's got a plan to get rid of all of his debt. Now Antonio is quite excited for him. I pray you, good Bassanio, let me know it. And he says that he will help him. He says that he'll use his purse, his person, and his extremist means to help his friend. Now, that's one of our key quotations in the play. So we're going to make sure that we highlight this. My purse, my person, my extremist means. This quotation tells us a lot about his character. He offers money. He offers to help in any way he can. And the extremist means, we need to write down, foreshadow the end of this play in, in act four where Antonio finds himself in court over the potential loss of a pound of flesh for his friend. So we'll put foreshadows act four. Now Bassanio is, um, to be honest, he reminds me a lot of a year 11 lad who's come up with a plan that doesn't necessarily sound like it's going to go all that well. He says that when he was a schoolboy, if he lost one shaft, one arrow, then what he would do is shoot another arrow in the same direction, follow it, and hopefully find both. Now, with the arrows, that makes sense to me. But he's going to apply this metaphor to money, and that's where we stop understanding him. Because he's going to say that what his plan is is to borrow some more money from Antonio and to spend all of it again. But hopefully in spending all of it, he's going to find all the money, this new lot of money that he's borrowed and all of the old money that he borrowed as well. Doesn't sound like the best plan in the world at this point, but what we do need to put down um, is where he says, um, I owe you much, so we'll underline that, I owe you much. And he says, but if you please to shoot another arrow that self way which you did shoot the first, I do not doubt, as I will watch the aim or to find both. So we'll just put a little bracket here and we'll say, wants to spend money to get money. Now, Antonio, who is a great friend to Bassanio, who has helped Bassanio a lot in the past, and he's already told you that he will give him his purse, his person, his extremist means. So not only is he family, not only is he a great friend, he will offer everything he can to Bassanio. He really does love Bassanio. So he says... So Antonio reminds Bassanio that he loves him and that he would do anything for him and that it's not necessary to waste time with all this preamble of telling him the, the plan with the arrows and the plan to spend more money. So he says, to wind about my love with circumstance and out of, and out of doubt you do me now more wrong. So he says, don't, you don't need to wind about me with these, with these tales. So circumstances means the, the stories that he's telling. And out of doubt, you do me now more wrong. So he says, by doubting that I would help you, you make me 